Hello, this is Kate, and I am live with the Bookkeeping Side Hustle group. Is there anyone online? Can anyone hear me? Oh, all right, cool. I'm getting some likes. Hi, Chasty. Hi, Vincent. Hey, cool. Well, I am two minutes late from when I said I was going to get started, so I will just jump right in. Um, I wanted to have a Facebook Live to, I guess, just kind of introduce this side hustle to people who are new. So this is definitely going to be for the for the newer crowd, um, not necessarily new to bookkeeping or accounting, but new to the concept of doing this on your own. Um, so just kind of basic question, what is virtual bookkeeping? Um, I was trying to think about how to answer this, and I thought um, if you could imagine like 20 years ago, let's say you were like a lawyer and you're graduating law school and you want to start a firm with like a few of your buddies, probably one of the first hires you're going to make was going to have to be someone who was probably like an admin assistant, and they were going to you know, answer your phones and, and also be your bookkeeper, right? They would do the billing and they had, you'd have some sort of system where you tracked it and maybe you would um, uh, have a software eventually. Um, you could go, businesses used to be able to go to like Costco and Sam's I think and buy like CDs of QuickBooks and you could install it on a computer or Quicken. Um, so that's kind of how it used to be. Um, and it used to take a lot of dedicated work um, from one person that, and they had to come into the office if they wanted to use a computer. So, nowadays, that's not the case. Everything is in the cloud. Um, that's a, a word that's, that's used a lot. This is called cloud accounting, um, virtual accounting. Um, those are all kind of synonymous, but basically means, for, an ex for example, you've probably heard of QuickBooks. Um, just they have the largest market share and biggest name recognition. Um, there's other software, too, like Xero, FreshBooks, um, Sage. Anyway... There's regular old QuickBooks that's been around for decades. Well, within the last, I don't know, decade, there's now QuickBooks online. And so, and it used to be not very good, and they've put a lot of money into developing it. Um, and their Zero is an only cloud-based product. It's never been uh, desktop, I don't think. Um, but all these things are allow you, allow a bookkeeper to be able to work from anywhere. Um, I know bookkeepers who are like travel the world bookkeepers and they are in a different country every few months and they still manage to run a business. Um, there, and then there are all these apps that go along with it. So you can have video calls kind of like this. Um, you can have, you know, there's Zoom and all sorts of different things that allow you to communicate and just basically do your work virtually. It's the same kind of way that lots of companies allow their people to work from home um, the bookkeeping industry allows that too. So that's what virtual bookkeeping is. Um, many of you in this group are accountants at um, small companies or large companies and you've never really thought like, huh, maybe I, I could do this from home. Um, I could access my different clients' books from home and the software enables you to do that. Um, so it's really not different from regular bookkeeping except where it is stored, is instead of being stored on a computer's hard drive, it's stored in the cloud now. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, I know that's a very, very basic intro to what virtual bookkeeping is. I'm not sure how new the crowd that's on here is, um, but I know some of the people who might watch this later, that's going to be a good good bit of information. Um, and here's the deal. A lot of you join the bookkeeping side hustle group because you're just looking for a side hustle. You're not, you weren't intrigued by the word bookkeeping, you were intrigued by the word side hustle. Um, and this side hustle may or may not be for you. There are a whole lot out there. Um, and so I encourage people who are in this group who have come to it because they're looking for extra income or they're looking for flexibility, like they are, and they want to change jobs, they're sick of working you know, driving an hour commute. Um, if, if you're just wanting a side hustle, you need to find out quickly if bookkeeping is right for you. Um, and I can share some tips with how, about how to do that. Um, but then move on. Don't, don't loiter here. Um, there are lots of other side hustles. Maybe you could be a proofreader. Maybe you could um, do something more physical. Maybe you're into 
sports and want to be like a trainer. Um, there's lots of different ways. So my main goal for people in this group is that they take advantage of all the technology, that all the technology allows us to do um, things from, from home, things at different hours of the day. Um, so for those of you who are just looking for a side hustle. Well, here, so here I'll give you some advice. If you don't, if you want to know whether you're going to like bookkeeping, I have a couple of suggestions. One is um, the two big softwares that I know and recommend are QuickBooks Online and Xero. And you can get your certification in those softwares completely for free. I think that if you can't stomach getting those certifications, then bookkeeping is not for you. So um, it's going to take time to learn it. There's trainings, there's free videos. Um, you can ask this group how to do it. I have some articles on the website about how to get those certifications. That'd be a good test. Um, if you get those certifications and you kind of like thinking about this stuff, then you can dive in deeper. Um, um, another what thing I recommend is to watch the three free videos from Bookkeeper Business Launch. Um, I think that presents the whole industry and a lot, a lot better than I, I have even just now. Um, so you'll get to know like, okay, I, this is what this is. You know, it's working with small businesses. Um, it's a lot of work from home. It's a behind the scenes type of a job. You know, you'll get to know the details of it and decide if it's for you. Um, here, I'm reading some of the comments over here. Let's see. Mohammed asks, what are the most common bookkeeping software in the market? Um, so for sure, QuickBooks, which is by a company called Intuit, has the largest market share. I don't know how high. I want to say it's probably 60, 70% of the global bookkeeping market software, and then everything else makes up the rest. Um, the other software that I'm familiar with and that I just personally really like, um, I like their style, their philosophy of business. They're a little more hip, I would say, Intuit. Um, you know, they have such a long history. Um, they have, they're just, they're just a little more, um, less nimble, um, and, and zero is it's, and that's spelled X E R O. Um, and those software, I have an article on the bookkeeping side hustle website as well about, um, getting certified in zero. Um, okay. Mohammed also asked what license do I need to work as a freelance bookkeeper? Um, you need whatever business license your state requires. Um, I'm just registered as like a doing business as because my, my business is, defi is definitely on the side hustle side. I don't have a lot of clients and I'm just kind of fitting this in while I have um, young kids at home. Um, it'll grow over time, but um, you know, I registered with my, my county um, to get a business bank account um, because I got a county business certificate. Um, so I can't answer that for where you are, Mohammed, but um, you don't have to have a license like a CPA to call yourself a CPA. You have to have a CPA license. Um, there's no licensing requirements. There's certifications you can, you can get. Um, all right, Leona, how do I start? Um, that's another question that some people had asked earlier today, and I, I kind of wrote down what I wanted to say. Um, so it's different whether you know accounting or you don't. So I'm going to kind of say, how do you start if you don't know accounting? Because that's the first step. Um, and then everything else would be the same. So if you don't know accounting and bookkeeping, and that, when I say that, I mean like the debits and credits, the journal entries, what's the difference between a balance sheet and an income statement? If you don't know that, please do not be a bookkeeper. <laughs> You need to learn it. You can become one, but don't start today. Um, this is a leg something I really wanted to emphasize on this call that this is not a side, like a brainless side hustle. And I think brainless side hustles are fine. You know, I actually mow my neighbor's yard, my direct next door neighbor's yard, because she pays me a good bit of money for the amount of work that it is. And I'm already out there sweaty and it doesn't take me much extra time to do it when I'm doing my own yard. That's a brainless side hustle and go for that. Some, there's a place for that. Bookkeeping is a legitimate professional business. You're going to have to have, you're going to have to constantly be learning. You're going to run into problems that you don't know, you know, you've never encountered. Like you're the business owner, you're supporting does something weird. Like maybe they buy a new business or maybe they bring in a partner or there's going to be just constant stuff that you're going to say, huh, I gotta, I have to, I have to figure out how to account for that. And you're going to have to have, you know, be smart to do it. 
Um, so the first step, Leona, um, and for everyone else who's at, I mean, I think this is a good just general question how to get started. You have to know accounting. Now, many of you in this group have undergraduate degrees in accounting, or maybe you're a CPA even. So you've gotten, um, you have that background. You might want to brush up on like the small business accounting. I mean, if you've been like accounting for, you know, if you've been in, if, if you've been in the accounting department for like a Fortune 500 company, it's going to be different <laughs> than, uh, than what your day job is. Um, but you understand the basics. Um, so that's the first step. There are a lot of free resources. Um, there's a website called Accounting Coach. Um, Hector Garcia has a lot of accounting material. Um, what else? Uh, I have on, our, on the Bookkeeping Side Hustle website, I have a list of books that I recommend, and some of them are more like business books, and some of them are bookkeeping books, where you can learn from a book if that's your preferred learning style. You could even go just take a couple of col college classes at like a community college. Um, that'd be a great way to start. You know, you don't have to get a degree to do this, but you do need to learn accounting. Um, let's see. I'm going to read some of these. So people are asking about QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. So when I started, I, I purchased a course called Bookkeeper Business Launch, I think in May of 27, 2017. And um, that course was told us to get certified in Zero and in QuickBooks Online. And then my very first client, I ended up, she, she ended up having a QuickBooks file already, and so a QuickBooks Online file, and so that's just what I continued in. And for side hustlers, I recommend one software. Um, if, you, if, you're, if you know that you're going to build a big business, that's fine. Part of me sometimes wishes I would have gone the zero route because Intuit has raised the prices for QuickBooks Online like three times, I think, since I've started and I haven't been doing this very long. Um, but it's not worth it to me to change to another software because although accounting is always the same, you know, the, the basic fundamentals are always the same, you know, where you click on a software is different and it takes a lot of time to learn all that. And so I recommend people stick, pick a software and stick with it. Um, it doesn't really matter what you pick. Um, as far as QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop, um, I do not know QuickBooks Desktop at all. I personally won't, don't imagine I'll ever have a client that's a QuickBooks Desktop's client, but, there are a lot of people who have figured out a way to serve QuickBooks desktop clients remotely. That's not my expertise. Um, there's a QuickBooks power user group um, run by Hector Garcia, and then you can also just ask in the Bookkeeping Side Hustle Facebook group um, how, how they do it. Um, I know it has something to do with like being hosted somewhere. I think there's a program called Team Viewer that might uh, uh, allow you to do it where you basically like portal into the QuickBooks desktop file that's on a computer in the office. Um, but I don't know how to do that. Um, here's my opinion about QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop for anyone who wants to know. I think whichever software you start on, that tends to be the software that the person prefers. Like if you poll people, I would say there's a high correlation with if people had to pick their favorite, they're going to their favorite is going to be the one that they started with. So there's QuickBook Desktop users who were, you know, using QuickBook Desktop since the 90s and early 2000s and whenever, and you ask them how they feel about online, and they totally give it a thumbs down. Um, and then if you ask people who started on QuickBooks Online, I, I think it's fine and it meets my needs. So um, I, that's my own personal and scientific opinion. <laughs> um, so, Valerie, you had asked that question about QuickBooks Online versus desktop. Um, again, accounting is accounting is accounting. The softwares pretty much all do the same thing. They might just have different ways of doing that same thing. And so I, I recommend learning how to do that on, on one software if you plan on just having a few clients. Um, let's see. Okay, I see a question here. Tom asks, what's the best ideal client to begin with? And what's the best way to find your niche? So... <laughs> um, after having a few clients, part of me wants to answer the best ideal client is someone who's nice and who cares about the business side of their business. Um, I don't know how many people, other people you ever asked that would say that though. Um, a lot of people say service industries are the best ideal client to begin with. Um, 
Tom, I don't know how much you know about accounting, but if you remember, um, for those of you who've had accounting classes, you know, there are lots of things that are more advanced than others. I kind of sometimes use the word varsity, like uh, if it, inventory is varsity. Um, C Corp is more varsity. Um, you know, multiple owners is more varsity. Um, like contract jobs that like a contractor's job where you might be building a house over the course of like three or four months and they've got like five or six houses going on at one time or like a house flipper that's varsity accounting um so if you're a good accountant then that's not a problem if y'all are a brand new bookkeeper um i don't recommend um you know being the bookkeeper for a store with 200 different products that they make and they have their own factory and that, that lots of fixed assets and stuff. That's just um, not not a good place for a beginner to start. I don't think um, best way to find your niche. Um, so everyone talks about niches. Um, again, there's something to be said for your niche just being nice people. <laughs> but if you want a niche. Um, I mean, the reason niches work is because you as the bookkeeper don't have to think as hard. Um, if you are only working for lawyers, then every time you sit down, no matter which file you open, you've got lawyer A, B, C, D, E, you've got five lawyers, but, but they all are kind of the same. They all have, you know, outstanding invoices, or maybe they have some prepayments that they have to get billed against, or, um, they maybe have an office rent, uh, but they probably don't have, you know, equipment that depreciates. I, I don't know. I'm just, so all that's the same. And so every time you log on, you're not having to turn your brain back on and say, okay, what's my inventory accounting again? How, what are my rules? Um, okay, what's my um, 401k accounting that I have to, like, I don't know. You don't have to think about it. If you have a lawyer and a vet and a tutor and a landscaper, you know, you're, it's every time you, every time you sit down to work, it's going to be harder. Um, you might not have apps that can serve all the clients. So you have to learn different apps because that particular industry needs a specific thing. So um, the best way to find your niche, um, some people stumble into it, but just by the first client that they get. And then you're like, Oh, okay. I like this guy. And he has other, he has other contacts in this industry. And so you might just end up with a niche that you never even knew. Um, a lot of people say pick a niche based on something, you know, so, as I've been in this business, I've started to notice like the random businesses that exist in the U S like surveyors, you know, you see like a guy on the side of the road and he's like looking out, like, I'm like, maybe I could be the bookkeeper for surveyors. I, 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 I'm not going to be, <laughs> I don't know any. Um, but if someone has a, you know, father that was a surveyor and that you grew up, you know, like cleaning his equipment, or you just kind of know something like that's like a totally random industry that like, maybe you could special you could specialize in and because you can be glo you know work throughout the whole country and i guess technically the whole globe um i don't really know the ins and outs of being global but um you can serve clients in any city any state so it doesn't matter so you could be the bookkeeper for surveyors or the bookkeeper for florists like maybe your mom was a florist and so you kind of know that industry um anyway lot, you know in in the course that i took bookkeeper business launch you know lots of people talk about like anyway the niches that are thrown around are like a lot bigger like veterinarians or dentists or chiropractors um and that would be great go for it be but sometimes i've just lately i've been i've been noticing like oh well there's a lot of random businesses that if you could get four or five of just that type of business you would have like a sweet side hustle where you'd be able to be super efficient you'd know exactly what each of your clients did because they all did the same thing i don't know um Let's see. I'm going to look at some more questions. Uh, Vincent Pruitt is asking, does bookkeeper business launch in and of itself teach accounting? So I will speak about that course. Um, and before I say anything more, um, one thing that does help kind of keep the lights on with this Facebook group, um, if, you, if you do end up buying that course and you want to um, allow me to get the commission instead of some other person that you've, you know, you Googled bookkeeper business launch review and you got to some article that you end up clicking through and your affiliate link is tied to them, then, um, but you want me to have it, then if you let me know ahead of time, I would greatly appreciate it. But Vincent, bookkeeper business launch does teach accounting from the very beginning. The very first, 
uh, lesson is like assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And the next lesson is what's the difference between a debit and a credit. Um, so it's, it's really pretty thorough. Um, I would say most people after they complete bookkeeper business launch and they take the test, like you, they, you don't have to take the test, but you can, if you want to know that you're actually learning, um, there's a lot of tests in the course. Um, a lot of people realize that if they really want to be serious, if they really want to have like a big business with, you know, where they're working full time, 40 hours a week, and maybe they have staff, like you probably will need to know more accounting than bookkeeper business launch teaches. But by that time you will, um, you'll know like your favorite resources. Um, you'll have bought some books. There's a lot of like, uh, you, people in the industry that are great teachers that teach more advanced concepts, you'll probably buy a couple of, you know, specific courses, or maybe you'll do something like get your um, enrolled agent certificate or something like that, where you're, you know, the, the IRS certification. And those, those are like really legitimate trainings um, that someone who's serious would, 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 would take as well. But yes, it teaches you accounting. There are a lot of people in the course that, you know, say, hey, I was a hairstylist and I want to be able to stay home with my kids and so I'm doing this and I've always liked numbers and I always keep the family books, you know, our, I do our budget and so I know I would like this and they have to learn and they have to work harder than people who didn't take it. Uh, my own personal story is I had two accounting classes in college, maybe three, and then I had two in uh, graduate school and I got my MBA as well. So I was kind of familiar with the concept, so it wasn't a complete start at the beginning. The concept of bookkeeping, though, was definitely a start from the beginning for me. I didn't know about like reconciling an account, and I didn't know about, um, you know, how to like generate all the reports and like bring all the transactions in and transfer the concept, of, like you know, transferring between accounts. Um, I didn't know any of that. So you definitely learn accounting, and you also simultaneously you kind of learn ac learning accounting while you're learning bookkeeping software. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Whereas in college, I remember you know you're doing accounting from a textbook, um, and you're not touching account bookkeeping software. Um, so you know you can, but but the real world isn't pen and paper like that. Um, let's see. I have see Trevor wrote what would be the best free way to get new clients. Um, free. Um, I mean, you just need to start telling people you're a bookkeeper. Um, I paid, it was 10 or 15 bucks for a sticker on my laptop. Um, so I just did that this summer though. Um, I've had two people talk to me <laughs> because of the sticker. Um, they haven't turned into clients yet, but uh, they might. Um, once the school year starts though, I plan to be out of my house um, working more and I hope to find a good spot maybe to where maybe that would drum up some stuff. So that was 15 bucks. Um, and then I think I got like 200 or so business cards for about 10 bucks. Um, and you just need a simple one. Um, I would bet if you bought between 100 and 200 business cards for less than 10 bucks, and if you passed all of them out, I bet you would find a client, Trevor. Um, there are cult messaging on LinkedIn strategies. Um, there's a lot of people who you know, don't have the ability to get out of the house as much, or maybe they're like caring for a parent or a spouse or a child. Um, there are also, once you get on LinkedIn and call yourself a bookkeeper, you're going to start getting lots of messages from people about saying like, hey, I can help you develop a LinkedIn strategy. Um, I have not used that strategy. Um, I have a lot of contacts on LinkedIn, but I'm, I keep my LinkedIn activity very low. Um, it just hasn't been something that I've needed to do. Um, yes, but stay debt free. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, okay. So you're also asking about B and I. Um, so I think the truth, ha Trevor, I would challenge you to think of businesses that are legit, like use your brain, professional businesses where you don't have to have any output, like any cost, you know, where there's no cost to start. Um, I think in the grand scheme of things, bookkeeping is probably one of the lowest costs. Even a BNI membership, um, I have a good friend, Chris, um, and he, he swears by BNI, and his business has boomed beyond what he really should even be doing. He, he works, he has too many clients, I think, um, it, because he hasn't been able to quit his full-time job yet. Um, once he quits his full-time job, then things will level out more, but he's having to really burn them in that oil right now. Um, 
and it was he he sings be a nice praises um i think they really do look out for their own especially if you get in if you get in a good group um and once you get just a few clients like referrals can really 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 start happening so um i know lots of people say you know they they think it's a big expense but um again the in in our local area, you know, I don't think it's I think it's maybe around like five hundred bucks. I don't think it's more than a thousand. I looked into it and I thought it was too expensive for me. For me, the bigger problem was the time commitment. Um, but if you make the time commitment and you go, I would almost guarantee. Well, if if you're good at bookkeeping, you would get clients that way, and you would more than pay for itself. Um, but yeah, I challenge you to to think about you know professional businesses where you really don't have to put a little money out at, at first. Um, Let's see. Lyle Ashley says, when doing public bookkeeping, do you set each client up as a separate company? Yes. Um, so I only have my clients in QuickBooks. So I have a QuickBooks accountant file. Um, if you go get your free QuickBooks certification, you'll learn all this. Um, I log in and I click on the top left menu my clients and then it has all my clients listed and then you click each of their and click by their name and then it teleports you into that client's books and then if you need to go to another client you know you as you says switch is a button or a menu where you can log out of that client and go to a different client from the client's perspective when they are also logging into their books they only see their books though quickbooks online accountant portal is just for people who've are quick you know sign up to be like an accounting professional like we are. So we have multiple pe companies in a list. I hope that makes sense. Um, trying to think if I want, I want to go back and anything about other free ways to get new clients. Um, Trevor, I can tell you one of my clients um, is from the kid pickup line at school and one of my clients is a friend from church um and i'm trying to think a couple i have another one from pair oh my very very first client was i thought that i wanted to do real estate accounting <laughs> because i thought i wanted to be a real estate investor in the future and i thought oh what better way to learn real estate than to you know l look at a real estate investor's books um that didn't go well. She was the, my first client that I, I ever I had to, you know, separate from. It just wasn't a good fit because she didn't know how to get me what I needed to do my job. But I, ha I was with her for probably about 15 months. Um, but I went to real estate investor meetings. I paid for a membership. I think it was 120 bucks. But I was interested in the material as well. And then while I was there, you know, it's kind of awkward, but you just got to like put yourself out there. Hey, yeah, I'm. I'm thinking about real estate investing. Oh yeah, I'm also a bookkeeper. I'm a QuickBooks Pro advisor, um, and I got my first client that way. Um, so I guess I paid the membership to the investor meetings, but um, that was good. That I wanted to do that anyway. All right, I'm scrolling down for some more questions. Ooh, Mary Flores, you cannot be published on the Pro Advisor site because they work in. Um, Mary, what I would say is I don't think it's a big deal if you're published on the Pro Advisor site or not. I don't think, um, it, as long as you can be a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, if you don't, if you're not allowed to have a profile, I think that's fine. I mean, you should still be able to use the badge. And if not, in, if, the, I don't know if you have a um, like non-compete stuff. I mean, can you just go get certified in zero? Um, but how you find potential clients, y'all, here's my tip. For the side hustler, the person who's not wanting to like really doesn't have a lot of time to devote to, you know, all day long trying to find clients, I think your first client is probably going to come like one degree, maybe two degrees of separation from you. It's going to be, you know, your cousin or your cousin's friend, or it's going to be the person in the carpool line at school or someone from, you used to go was in your fraternity or you know, what something like that um it's or your neighbor um or the guy who cuts your grass um or the i mean i don't know you the if you're if you babysit 
your neighbor's kids, you know, and you find out, oh, they they have a business doing whatever. That that that's that's what I would recommend. Um, and it just really helps build your confidence, and it gets your hands in books that then there's no better way to learn. Like no ma no amount of the pro advisor certifications or any of that. The best way to learn is to be like sweating over some books and like it's going to be slow and you're like do I really click that do I really add that is that the right category and then after a while you're not going to have to think about it that much but that's that's just the best way to learn so Mary I don't know exactly what your situation is about what you can and can't do um, if you work at Intuit um, if you're allowed to be a pro advisor and you just can't advertise um, I would just not worry about being on the directory um, I think if you say I'll work for Intuit people think that you're a very good you know you have the technical skill to be a bookkeeper um, Melissa do you have to be good at doing math in your head to be a successful bookkeeper um I don't do any math in my head I would almost say that the way the software works right now um, if you're doing math in your head you're doing it wrong like even this morning I was doing some fairly complicated like payroll journal entries and I like, every time I do them I'm so glad that it does the math for me and I'm also glad for double entry accounting because it provides a check like I know like if I didn't add the social security taxes correctly because if the two columns don't add up because the debits have to equal the credits then I did something wrong so I would say I never do math in my head um, <laughs> And I'm good at math. I've always been pretty good at math. Um, Wendy, what if you ha make a mistake? Um, I, I have business insurance. Um, it's not a lot, um, so I recommend that. Um, I have it through Hiscox. Katie Williams, you're asking about how does BBL course work as far as the set hours and self-paced. So it is 100% self-paced. Um, they have a suggested curriculum, but it is totally flexible. Um, and I would say the suggested curriculum is for people who are completely brand new. So for me, I would have called myself like definitely not a beginner just because I've had, I had had, had accounting classes before. Um, so that like the first ones, like I was able to listen to on like, you know, you can make the videos play faster um, you know some of the ones I would make the videos play faster and then when they're getting into like the QuickBooks stuff like if it was like assets equals liability plus owners equity I could listen to that fast and just be reminded if it was where to click click around in QuickBooks and how to do a journal entry in QuickBooks I'm having to watch every step of that during those early days when I was doing my training um, so there's all problems you can work like in most of the modules at least when I was doing the early training um, you could listen to the course you could do the exercise and then there was even like suggested extra practice exercises I didn't really do the extra practice exercises some people do um, totally self-paced I remember back when I bought the course I before I bought it I specifically said wrote the the people that sold it and said if I only have for sure less than 10 hours a week probably some weeks only five hours could would this be a good purchase for me and their honest answer was that they suggested that it would I mean yes you could do it if you only have five hours a week but the nature of this is it's really better to, to kind of compress it and so they said like minimum minimum 10 hours a week of being able to study and get through the material is what they recommended uh, or what they said was kind of the the minimum a lot of people spend more time than that um, I mean you can treat this as like a full-time job if studying if you wanted to and had the time to I just didn't I knew that I was going to be able to get up at like 4 35 in the morning and maybe work for about an hour and a half or two hours um, at the time when I was studying now I have more time um, my kids are in school um, so yes self-paced um, Uh, Joanny, Joanny, um, sorry if I mispronounce your name. How are you able to utilize what you learn through books to the real world with no experience? Um, it's scary, um, and for me, I, that fear was so great that I knew I needed a support system. So that's why I knew that I needed the community that came with Bookkeeper Business Launch. Um, 
I think we, at, you know, here in this bookkeeping side hustle group have kind of developed our own community to where, you know, if you get stuck on something, you can get an answer. Um, I've realized now that there are a lot of people who are willing to help. Um, Hector Garcia's group has, have, you know, when you get stuck on something, because you will get stuck on something, um, you can get answers. But for me, the Bookkeeper Business Launch had um, kind of that mentoring aspect because they had a staff. There's other people that do that that don't um, cost as much as Bookkeeper Business Launch, um, kind of more, and, and that are more hands-on. I wouldn't say that Bookkeeper Business Launch is like a, a coach really anymore. I think when he started it, he probably was. Um, there's a gal in this group, Tiffany Higgins, um, and I'm trying to create a post that's going to get a few more of the other people that do offer mentoring or coaching. Um, so depending on your style, like you might want someone that can just, you know, that you pay and there are people that do like really hands-on coaching. Um, and then Bookkeeper Business Launch, you know, it's an instructor. There's, I think there's over like 5,000 students now. So it's definitely not the, you know, buddy, buddy coach anymore. I mean, you can email and get your questions answered, but, it has grown so much that really it's the community that takes care of each other whenever we get into problems. So Joni, what you do is you kind of fake it till you make it. Like you have to know bookkeeping, but even the best bookkeepers are going to have questions or they're going to make a mistake or they're going to transfer to the wrong account or they're going to go, what's up with this undeposited funds? Or, you know, there's just like weirdnesses that happen. And um, that's when you, you know, if you're on the phone with your client, you just say, I'll get back to you. And then you go sweat it out for a little bit. And every subsequent client, you will get, you'll get better. Um, one of the things I think I'll just emphasize about this business. Um, so for me, I wanted to make money. That was one of my big motivations. We had some financial goals. And so I was looking for ways to make money, like, you know, most money with, but I, I didn't want to go just get a job. We we're still wanting, you know, my kids are still at home. Um, and so I will say that this is not a quick buck and, you know, my cost, my, my dollars per hour were probably very low and at the very, like that first year and even, especially if you count in all the like training I did, like if you had to allocate the hours that I spent having to learn all this, you know, it's like I made hardly any money per hour. Um, but now, but the thing about the bookkeeping and using the software tips and tricks and as you get good and you know keyboard shortcuts and you can set bank rules, it's just amazing. It's like what took you three hours nine months ago takes you 45 minutes now. Um, and that's where, so it's, it's kind of a long-term play, people. It's a long -term play. Um, Adam, thanks. You're saying I'm doing a great job. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, Melissa, what's my elevator pitch? So I don't pitch a lot. I mean, I, ha I think I have like six, I have six clients. One I've, don't have any more. Um, one I got through an, like a, a matchmaking firm called Pero. So I'm not the best at my elevator pitch, but what I want to be able to say is, oh, I'm a bookkeeper. I can help you with that. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that, that, that's, you know, I, I don't know that I've, I might have said that one time to someone and I don't know that they, they hired me, but that's kind of like, oh yeah, I can, I can help with that. Um, and so it's just a matter of getting yourself in front of small business owners um, because y'all, most small business owners have no idea what they're doing with accounting <laughs> and they hate it and they are terrible at it and they're never going to get good at it. Um, and so if you can just get someone to complain just a tiny bit and then if you say, well, I can, I can, I can help with that. That's no big deal. Um, like I had one, one of my clients, y'all, he had to get a refund and he thought, he felt so bad. He thought that was going to mess up his book. He's like, I guess my books are going to be off $400 forever. So he had to give a refund to a client. Um, and, and he, and I was like, no, no, it's cool. <laughs> um, we can, we can handle giving someone a refund. Um, they, you know, he's good at what he does, but didn't understand the accounting at all. Um, yes, Mary, you need to be brave and really start talking to people outside the internet. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking the one client I have through the Paro network is the only client that I would say that I didn't. Um, a lot of people, I, I, I think my confidence is such that I would be a, feel a lot better about that now. 
Um, but for those first clients, like I just, I wanted to be virtual, but I had to get babysitters and go out to networking events at night. Um, or his home, you know, he, he can, he, he, he did it as much as he can. He's, he's not around too much, but, um, so yes, you have to be brave. Y'all entrepreneurship is like way hard. <laughs> so don't think of this as easy. This is not like driving for Uber. This is, I mean, you're going to feel dumb. You're going to want to cry. You're going to be told no. You're going to be, there are people who are mean. Um, yeah. So Melissa, I want to work part-time to make a full-time income. Income. What do you advise? <laughs> well, don't we all? Um, well, um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think you're maybe barking up the right tree with this industry because a couple things. I think you can raise prices legitimately at, if you have successful clients. So you're going to know how much they make and you're going to know how profitable they are. And so it's like, it's, it'd be easy to say like, well, he, you know, he was paying me 2% of his gross income last year and now I'm down to like 0.2%, like um, th they can start to pay me more, but, but your work really isn't that much, you know, because they've been raising their prices on people. Um, and the other thing is, I think that you'll get efficiency you'll, as you get better at the job. I think you will have to work hard. You'll, you'll feel like you're not making very much per hour. Um, you don't shouldn't charge per hour, but just that you're not making much per unit of time that you're working at the beginning though, Melissa, um, unless you're like a bookkeeping genius. But for me, that's, that's kind of how I felt, but I'm able to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and realize, okay, you know, I'm going to be able to, you know, with each passing month, I can't, and if I don't add any new clients, I should be able to work a little bit less and less because I'm going to set up those bankrolls. I'm going to understand the business better. Um, I'm going to realize that every time he shops here, that's what he's, this is, you know, he's doing X, Y, Z. Um, so I think this could be sort of what you're looking for, Melissa, in terms of working part-time but making a full-time income. Um, but it's not going to happen fast. And you're going to have to be committed to really, um, you have to be really committed to, learning the apps and the, the workflows and all that. And like, so for me personally, I think I'm pretty bad at all of that. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm probably working more than I, more than some people would on the clients that I have because I haven't had, I don't have the, I don't also have the time to learn how to do my job better. Um, one day I hopefully will have that time. How do you figure out pricing, Kristen Sheeks? Um, so I use the Bookkeeper Business Launch Calculator. Um, I haven't had to come up with that too many pricing proposals, so I'm not an expert at it. Um, I have some resources, though. A guy named Mark, Mark Wickersham, and he's in the group if you search for him. He has a lot of pricing. Um, I have a book listed, book of his listed also on um, the, 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 our web, my website, we're at books for bookkeepers. Um, you, it's one of the more recent articles I've written. Um, he's good. Um, I use the BBL calculator. Um, and you should ask that question in the group because I'm probably not the best expert at how to do it. I kind of just throw a dart at the board sometimes. Actually, I'll tell you what I've done. I, I, I've priced each subsequent client more than the one before. So there. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get slapped from all the pricing experts out there. But in my mind, I'm just like, okay, I'm better. I'm a better bookkeeper for you, potential client, than I was for the last potential client because I have more experience. So you're getting a higher price. Um, Ashley uh, Davies, yes, it costs to do bookkeeper business launch. Um, currently, it costs two grand or $199 a month for 12 months. And the price is going up September 13th. Um, Your husband wants to learn. So, y'all, this is a pro tip. I think there's a, a really good synergy to have of families doing bookkeeper business launch together. I think husband and wife can do it. I also think parent-child can do it. I'm working on an article about how, like, homeschool moms should incorporate accounting into their uh, a book you know a bookkeeping entrepreneurship curriculum into their homeschool curriculum for their like 17 18 year old um, so uh, there's a lot of husband and wife teams Ashley that do it um, and yeah y'all could pour a glass of wine sit down watch the videos together 
both be on your laptops nerding out on accounting. Um, Valerie Dixon uh, recommend becoming an LLC or just be a sole proprietor. So I'm just a sole proprietor. Um, I have business insurance um, that was I don't I'm not required to be an LLC. Um, I think the way I'm I think what I'm supposed to say is you're supposed to ask an attorney on that one. Um, the bigger you are, I think the better, like the more formal you want to take your business, you know, eventually you want to have an LLC. It's still not, I still haven't decided like how much I'm going to, I'm going to go. Um, I had a goal of getting three new clients this year. I've only gotten one new client. Um, I have had, I have a proposal out right now and another, I had another prospect meeting on Monday. So I think I still have a chance to get three new clients. Um, I guess technically I subcontract, I subcontract that uh, for one client for uh, one of my friends from bookkeeper business launch. So I guess I could count that as my second client for this year. I don't know. Um, I'm not interested in having a lot of clients at this point. Um, Melissa Bailey, how were you able to get clients when you first began? Um, I don't know if you, when you joined, but I, um, my first client came was a real estate investor and it's because I was going to real estate investor meetings in my community because um, I thought I also wanted to be like a landlord or maybe like flip a property. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> I thought I'd be like laying laminate flooring um, in my free time. But um, she, w there was like a speed networking night at, the, at this real estate investors group had at one of their monthly meetings and everyone passed out cards and um, I met her that night. Um, all right, in 45 minutes. Um, I printed off some of the questions people asked. Um, I want to make sure I say everything I want to say. Oh, some people ask, what is the day-to-day -day of a week schedule? So I, my, my bookkeeping work is very simple. It's basically, um, you know, service industry clients, essentially, and I just basically work off their bank feed. So um, if you are a much more hands-on bookkeeper, you'd charge probably a lot more than I do. Um, but my clients basically just get monthly reports at the end of the month. So I try to do most of my work during the first week of the month. So like next week, so tomorrow's August 1st, um, I have my kids in a vacation Bible school this week and a golf camp next week. And I will have all my bookkeeping done. And I'm not Thing. Um, but I'm not going to do any more um, for a few days of next week, this couple, I don't know, this week and next week, whenever I have the few hours that they're gone. Um, that's how I do it. Um, my bookkeeping, just the nature of it is very simple. Um, if you're doing accounts payable and accounts receivable and such, you would have to, um, you know, be in contact a lot more. But, I mean, you can take the clients that you want to take. Um, mine are kind of deliberately pretty simple. Um, but they need me. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not, not doing good work. Um, I just have, I, I've made the choice to keep things simple. Oh, that was another thing. Someone asked about what services to offer and like what, 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 what a list would be. Um, I think that was Amy. And I wanted to say what I would do if you want to know what kinds of services bookkeepers can offer. My suggestion is go to the bookkeeping side hustle Facebook group search for the word website and you're going to see a couple of threads that we've done where people have posted their websites. We've done like website reviews. Um, go look at other people's websites. Mine is on there at some point. Um, I'm heritagebusinessservices.com. Um, mine's not as good as, there's a lot of better ones out there. <laughs> um, but you can go see what services are offered um, from, you know, just basic categorization and reconciliation, which is all that I do. Um, some people can do full-blown payroll. Um, some people do accounts payable, accounts receivable. Um, but those, lots of the websites of people in this group uh, have lists of services. <clears throat> Laura, okay, for someone who has a financial background but is interested in doing BBL as a refresher, would you recommend getting clients while doing BBL or wait until course completion? what you can get them uh, while you're doing the course. Um, I mean, it depends on how good you are marketing. 
Um, so you might not ever finish the course if you get too many clients, um, but then you might not need, I mean, you might find that you don't need to, you might get your first client and realize, whoa, hold on. I don't want to market anymore until I go through all the course because this was way harder than I thought. And you, you know, I mean, I, I had a finance background too, and um, I didn't have a lot of time. So if you have a lot of time, then maybe you could have, but like I, I could have, I only wanted one, kind of one client at a time at the beginning. But the course recommends you start looking for clients pretty, pretty soon um, because I think some, some people find it harder than maybe they imagine to find clients. Um, hope that answers your question, Laura. Wendy, do you have month-end meetings with each client? So I, all of my engagement letters say I have month-end meetings with my clients, but they don't too often take advantage of them. Um, I usually try to summarize whenever I send them their their financial um, reports, um, kind of some of the main findings that I h want them to get out of their numbers, but um, I mean, you can't make them have a call with you if they don't have time. Um, Melissa Bailey, do you require a down payment prior to service? Uh, yes, we're supposed to. Um, I was bad about that. I didn't have the guts to do it. Um, probably until like my third or fourth client. Um, BBL teaches us that we're supposed to get paid before you do any work. Um, and you're supposed to get paid at the first of the month on like a recurring basis. Like it's supposed to be automatic. And I just, my stomach just got too nervous thinking about actually asking someone to do that whenever I was having like, I didn't have the confidence that I do now and I don't have high confidence, but I have more than I did. Um, I didn't have the confidence to just say that like, oh, I want you to write me a check and I haven't touched a thing. Um, so um, in terms of down payment prior to service, like lots of times people would call that a cleanup job too. Um, so yes, for the monthly payments, you should get paid in advance. Um, if you're cleaning, cleaning up like, um, in my, and I, I have, a, I use the calculator that come, came with my course to price that, but you would, um, some people say for that, if it's a lot of money, like several thousand dollars, maybe they offer them like increments, like a third at the beginning, a third at like a halfway point and a third at the end. Um, Valerie, how long do you think it takes roughly to go through BBL and QBO certification processes? Um, so again, I had some background, um, but I was able to, well, they didn't have the, they didn't have the like official certification when I first took the course. I don't know. I mean, I know that I think I bought the course either at the end of April or early May of 2017. Um, and I think I had my first meeting with a potential client, which was this real estate flipper. Uh, I, I want to say by July. And um, there, there was, I, had, I had my QuickBooks certification for sure by the time I met with her. Um, but I don't, there, there was no BBL certification then. I went back and got my BBL certification, but it's, it'll be a little bit disingenuous for me to answer that question because I had already been doing bookkeeping for a while. So I like blew through those, like I watched the modules like on twice speed and then I took the test. And I also happened to always have been good at taking tests. It's a weird skill. I don't know. It's like I, I can just, I don't know. I can do multiple choice tests well. So I was able to get my BBL cert probably faster than BBL would have been to in terms, I mean, you can get as fast as you want, but in terms of like comprehending and following along, um, I, I, I wanted that certification to put it, the badge on my website. Um, so, but I, I went through it kind of quickly. So I would ask, there are people in this group who've taken it. Um, you can ask other people, but so I, I was weird. So I went through it one time, started like probably first week of May, had a client by July. Um, and then a year later when they came out with the certification stuff, I went through the course again, but I kind of did it turbo mode and more. I wasn't trying to learn. I was just trying to pass. Um, Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Um, I wanted um, to share a link, um, a little self-promo here. Um, there's this little website called coffee.com. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but um, I'm going to put a little link here. If you, It allows people to buy someone a coffee. Um, <laughs> So if you would like to, you'll see the link right there. Um, I think I have a link 
to it in the announcement section of the Bookkeeping Side Hustle website. Um, yeah, if you, I don't know, want to toss me a few bucks, I would appreciate it, and I will toast to you. Um, if I go buy a Starbucks when I'm sitting in the coffee shop with my laptop sticker on in the fall once my kids are in school. Um, yeah, and the only other thing I say is if you um, – if you end up buying Bookkeeper Business Launch, um, I would really appreciate it if you told me ahead of time, and that's the best way to ensure that I receive an affiliate commission. Um, you certainly don't have to, and I hope that it's obvious that I'm not trying to just push that course. Um, please, please go to www.bookkeepingsidehustle.com, and um, there are resources for getting started. Um, whether you want to be just, you know, some of y'all might just want to be subcontractors for people. I've got, I've got resources for just people who want to freelance that way as a subcontractor, to people who want to build a whole business, to people who just want to have a few clients like me, but have their, you know, have 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 their own business to do that. Um, so please go to that website and um, look around, and you'll see that there are lots of ways to do this. Oh, another tip, and no one can find these, but if you're on your desktop. On Facebook, on the left side, there's a thing that says files, and there's a whole bunch of interviews from people, and I don't think any of them have taken Bookkeeper Business Launch. So you can find out, and the first thing I ask them, I think, like, the first question is, how did you get started? Um, so there's lots of ways, and I'm here to help, and we'll do this again, and it's bedtime. Um, I hope y'all have a great night, and for those of you who are watching later, um, I don't know how it works when you comment if you watch it later. So if you have a specific question, just chime in. You, know, you can write it here on this Facebook video, but also write it on the main page. All right, adios.